In this example, I want to find the exact value for the sine of 15 degrees, and we're going to walk through this and do it two different ways. The first way is we're going to use the difference formula for sine, and then the second way is we're going to use the half angle identity for sine. Okay, so the formulas I have written out here, so the difference identity for sine, so we have two angles that we're subtracting, so it's the sine of a minus b, and ultimately that ends up being this expression, it's the sine of a times the cosine of b, minus the sine of b times the cosine of a, so you kind of just switch them around, but you keep the sine and cosine in both cases. So let's go ahead and do that first. So the sine of 15, we can rewrite as the difference of two more common angles that we know, 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. So 45 minus 30 is our 15. So by using this difference formula, we can go ahead and find the exact value for the sine of 15 degrees. Okay, so the 45 degrees will be my A, and the 30 degrees will be my B in this case. So it's the sine of A times the cosine of B. So it'll be the sine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 30 degrees, and we'll subtract from that the sine of b, which is 30, so the sine of 30 degrees times the cosine of 45 degrees, okay? And these are all actually really nice values that we know because they fall nicely in our unit circle. So the sine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2, and the cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2, the sine of 30 is 1 half, and the cosine of 45 is radical 2 over 2. Okay, well let's go ahead and multiply both of these little products together here. So we have the square root of 6 over 4 minus the square root of 2 over 4. And ultimately we can go ahead and put that over a single common denominator and say it's the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4, and that's going to be the exact value for the sine of 15. Let's go ahead and plug it into a calculator and kind of just verify that that's correct. So here we go. We're going to do the inverse sine of this uh, ratio here. So the inverse sine, and we have our numerator, so let's open up parentheses for our numerator. The square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 close those parentheses for the numerator, and we're going to divide that by 4, and then close the parentheses for our inverse sine, and we get 15 degrees, okay? So we kind of verify that that worked out. So here is the first way that we're going to look at doing this, and that's by using our difference formula for sine. And so we see that the sine of 15 degrees equals the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2, all over 4. So let's go ahead and work this again now and use the half angle identity. So I rewrote the formula. So the sine of theta over 2 is going to be the same as the square root of, and we have a numerator and a denominator, 1 minus cosine of that angle, theta, and then divide that by 2. Okay, so if we're using the sine of 15 degrees, well, I can rewrite that as the sine of 30 degrees divided by 2 which is going to suggest that our theta then is 30 degrees. So if we look at using this formula, it'll be 1 minus the cosine of 30 degrees, all divided by 2, and all of that is underneath a radical, okay? So we know that the cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2, so we can write it this way, all that divided by 2, and all that underneath a radical. Well, it doesn't automatically look uh, very nice, but we're going to go ahead and work this uh, radicand. We're going to simplify this complex fraction and see what we can do with it. Okay, so the first thing is let's look at this numerator, and we'll go ahead and get common denominators for this numerator. Okay, so we'll multiply the 1 by 2 over 2. So we'll end up with 2 minus the square root of 3 all over 2, and then of course all of that is over 2 as well. So the 2 here that's in the denominator is really 2 over 1. So if we are dividing this, I can really multiply by 1 half. We'll play a little fraction acrobat and bring that guy up. Okay, so we really have 2 minus the square root of 3 all over 4. And we have the square root of that. 
So we're going to do a thing here, just kind of come along with me for the ride. So we're going to multiply by 2 over 2 inside that radical. So really I'm just multiplying by 1. So I'm not changing the value of this, I'm just going to change the form that it's in. And what that's going to look like now, I'm going to distribute that through. So it'll be 4 minus 2 times the square root of 3 all over 8, and all of that is under the radical. And then let's go ahead and divide that up into two pieces. So I have the square root of 4 minus 2 radical 3 all over the square root of 8. Okay, well this doesn't look very fantastic and it especially doesn't look like what we had previously. Let me move back up here. We had the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. Well, this looks a, a lot worse because we actually have a radical inside of a radical. So what we're going to do is I'm going to rewrite this 4 minus 2 radical 3. And I'm going to rewrite it in such a way where I can factor it as a perfect square. So then that square and the square root will actually cancel each other out. So I can eliminate having the radical inside of a radical. Okay, well what's that going to look like? Well, I'm going to rewrite this 4 as a 3 plus 1. And I'm going to rewrite this negative 2 radical 3 as a minus the square root of 3 minus the square root of 3. Okay, so I've broken it up into four terms, all of course which add up to 4 minus 2 radical 3. And all of that is under the radical, and all of that is over the square root of 8. Okay, well why would I do that? Well, like we said, we're going to factor this as a perfect square. So let's go ahead and use factor by grouping. So what's the greatest common factor of these first two terms? Well, it looks like I can pull out a square root of 3, and I'm left with a square root of 3 minus 1. And so for this part, I'm going to go ahead and factor out a minus 1. So basically just changing the signs here. And I'll have a negative 1 plus the square root of 3. All that's under that radical, and of course all of that is still over the square root of 8. Okay, and as you'll see, this negative uh, 1 is paired up with this radical 3. So we have a negative 1 plus radical 3, negative 1 plus radical 3. So these actually are the same. So I can just change the order here. And I'm going to call that the square root of 3 minus 1. And look at my greatest common factors. Oh, the square root of 3 minus 1. So that actually did factor very nicely. Okay, so I can write that now as a perfect square underneath that radical all over the square root of 8. So the square root and the square cancel each other out and I have the square root of 3 minus 1 all over the square root of 8. And then let's go ahead and rationalize that a little. We'll multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2 and I will be given then the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over the square root of 16 which is 4. So now it does look like uh, what I had in the first place. So the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. That's what I had here when I used the difference formula for sine. And so we already checked in the calculator. We know that works as the sine of 15. So here we go. Two different ways to find the exact value for the sine of 15 degrees. And we use the difference formula and the half angle identity.